Right, welcome everybody to the, my discussion about the GSOC 2023. The Palisades Foundation has been awarded the uh, 2023 um, GSOC or Google Summer of Code Award and we will be going directly into uh, creating issues around the existing Talawa applications and from there we will also be trying to find out ways in which we can make sure that it is fundamentally functional. But in the meantime, if you're new to the Talawa organization and Palisades Foundation in general, I just want to let you be aware of what we do. So the Palisades Foundation was originally created by Jamaican expatriates to promote the software development industry in Jamaica. And with time, we eventually worked on creating our own open source projects. And one of them is Talawa, which is what we are focusing all our attentions on. After a number of years of development, we decided to apply for the Google Summer of Code. And fortunately, this is the third year that we have been selected. So if you've not been aware of Talawa, um, let me just give you an idea as to where to find documentation. So the first place to go is to go to docs.talawa.io and you'll get this page. Just click on the About page and then from there you should just scroll down to the Internships section and you will have an overview as there. And then from there what I also suggest is that you click on our Ideas list. And this will provide you with a general information as to what we're trying to consider. Uh, please go through and read this document. It's very detailed. Uh, we talk about what the various pages that you should take a look at. Uh, we have an introduction page. We have um, an application guide and some application templates that we suggest that you read. Um, we also have a uh, We've been also really trying as much as possible to make sure that we have 100% test coverage for all our tests, um, for all the code that we have. And the reason for this was because in the early days, Talawa was inherently unstable and it would crash a lot of the times. Right now, we don't have as many errors and crashes. We tend to have non-functioning um, things, but things aren't crashing, which is a much better user experience than we've had before. The general areas of knowledge are going to be Talawa, which is a Flutter Dart application, but it also interacts with an API using GraphQL. And then we also have Talawa API and Talawa Admin, which uses TypeScript. The ideas on the ideas page generally have descriptions. And we talk about things that are going to be relatively easy, things that are exploratory, fun, core. For the most part, what we're trying to work on right now are um, usually core types of developments and the difficulties are usually about medium to hard. We generally suggest that you try to do research on the applications in general. There are videos on this page in which you can see comparative types of applications so that you can get an idea of what we are trying to achieve. Um, there are many types of software that are out there. They are called either church or temple management software systems. And in many cases, if you go and search on YouTube, you'll be able to see what those um, applications can do. And then in many cases, there are demo sites and we have some demo URLs on the ideas page, which I strongly suggest that you take a look at. Now, we have an, a number of ideas that we have um, on this page. And if you look over on the right hand side of the page, you will see links to each of the various ideas that we have. This is not an extensive list of ideas. These are the ones that we thought would be most pressing, but we are certain that there are other areas in which there could be improvement. Now, in the past, I want to let everyone know that we've had people who um, apply it to some app to some ideas more than others and what that sometimes means is that we will have 30 people applying for one idea and only two people applying for the other one and um, sometimes those people who apply many people that are applying there's a great deal of overlap in their ideas and so therefore we are torn between making selections for for the people so i would suggest if you're trying to apply um, apply to multiple ideas 
and then also really make a big effort to try and think of ways in which your idea um, will differentiate yourself from other ideas as well. So, for example, in this particular application, we talk about news feed, uh, spam and newsfeed plugins, but there could be other plugins that could be added. For example, I'm not going to give any examples because I'm, that would be up to you, but if you, for example, could come up with two more um, post potential mobile app plugin ideas, then if we have a lot of um, plugin ideas, we could potentially approach two people to apply for or to be members of the GSOC application for this. And we'd ask them to say, uh, would you be interested in doing two of these plugins? And then we'd ask the other one to say, would you be willing to do the other two plugins? We have done this in the past on at least two or three occasions. So please be aware of that. Um, that would be really, really good to consider. Um, we try as much as possible to provide you with insights into the design of what we're trying to achieve and um, give you just general expected outcomes. And uh, in each of the ideas that we have, we mention what the potential mentors could be. We give you both their names and their uh, GitHub IDs so you can add them uh, in, in GitHub ideas, um, sorry, GitHub issues, and then you can try and get in contact with them on, on Slack. So that is just some general guidelines. I'm not going to go through all of these, but I just wanted to provide you with some general information. If you also click on the application template link, we, you will see things about um, types of things that we want to, to, to see. So we want to get some information about you, like what you do, hobbies, activities, etc. Um, and then talk about what exists and what identified needs that you see and, and why. Uh, this is really important. And, and take a look and try to think of uh, what we have that could be replaced or what could be reused so that we can uh, have a, a, just a better experience in, in, in general. Talk about the design and not, don't just say, I want to implement a particular type of design. Uh, talk about the design, what other alternatives you've selected, you've thought about, and why specifically you've thought about this design. Please remember in all your thoughts that many of the organizations that will be using uh, an application like this, so think about your local temple, your local church, synagogue, whatever the organization is, your local sports club, they may not have users that are A, very literate, B, have a lot of money to use third-party services, or C, have a dedicated IT team to make things work. We need to have things that can work for an organization that may possibly want to host this on their own uh, server in... in um, and by a cloud provider and not necessarily use anything else from the cloud provider. They may not want to use their the cloud provider storage. They may not want to do some of these other things. So just keep that in mind. It doesn't mean that you say that you, it cannot be used at all. Just talk about what you think the trade-offs could be and why you think one way versus another one would be beneficial to the end user. Okay, and always think, always, always, always think about who's going to be using this thing, when are they going to be using it, where are they going to be using it, why are they going to be using it, right? what, are they, what do they really want. So the, 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 the traditional methodologies of analyzing anything, the who, what, when, where, why, how, those are the things that we really want you to um, talk about. And then write about what your deliverables are going to be, what the milestones are, and rough details of the scheduling. Now, something that I want to stress a great deal, I've mentioned that we need to have testing because we want to make sure that our code coverage testing does not go down. But another thing that we want to make sure of is that the code... Um, uh, I lost my train of thought. 
So we were talking about the testing. Yes. The other thing that we want to make sure of is that you have pull requests on a regular basis. This is really important. We've had many, many, many cases in which people don't do any pull requests that are that are visible to the community in general and maybe just visible to their mentors. And then there's a mad rush at the very end to put everything together and then things break. And we've had things break and because things break, there have been ideas that have been not implemented in the current uh, code base. And so we've had to um, revert merges, which is something that we don't want to do. So I strongly, strongly, I cannot mention how strongly I recommend this, but we need to see uh, pull requests on minor aspects of your modifications, at least weekly, um, at most every two weeks. But we need to see continuous action. Uh, this allows us to evaluate not just yourself, but also the, the work between you and your mentor. So think of um, whether it is going to be the agile approach or whatever, whatever the approach is going to be, but we need to see regular updates. Um, it, it emulates what you see in the real world, and it also makes life a lot easier for you in the long run, because then you don't have a lot of work just piling up at the very end. And so that's going to be um, important. So let's talk about the selection criteria. We, we look at a number of things. Um, and we look at the quality of issues that people have worked on or have created. Uh, usually when the official announcement goes out, which is like right now, we would see a lot of people doing things like uh, putting in pull requests for typos in documentation or typos in the code base or grammar, mod grammar checks. No. What we're looking for are things that are meaningful, that have a meaningful impact upon the, the, uh, the operation of Taliban on the whole. And so generally speaking, we're, 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 we discount people that tend to have low, low quality issues and low quality PRs. Um, PRs that we find very useful are the like, PRs that uh, improve the test coverage that we have because we really, really want to make sure that the testing is is um, is good, and we also and and issues that people work on that have make sure that we restore functionality, just like in some of the videos that you've seen uploaded in which we've done analyses of Talo and Talo admin, and we prioritize PRs that have actually been merged. So if you Put in a PR and then you close it. You're not. You won't be. That won't be taken into consideration because we we do queries against PRs and we look for ones that are merged, and take it take a look at those sorts of things. Um, there we've had people that have done dozens and dozens of PRs and have not been selected. We've had some people that have done three or four, but they've been significant in making things um, greatly improved and then we, we we often choose them so the actual quantity of prs merged um, is taken into consideration but we we also take into consideration whether we we feel the person would be a good member of the community whether the the impact that they've made with the prs that they've done uh, has made them is is meaningful for the the long run so that's really important we if you've noticed, the community that we have is very is, is very open. We, we may not necessarily respond very, very quickly, but we really, because everybody has their own jobs, people study, they go to school, uh, and so um, sometimes there may be delays, but we really try to make sure that we, we deal with one another in a very professional manner. And there's a code of conduct that we have that we want to make sure that everybody adheres to. And we have people from all around the world they have all different types of backgrounds. Um, because we are a global organization, we may have people who are working with us from zones that are in conflict with one another. And so therefore we try as much as possible to keep a very professional level of, in, of discussion when we're working. So that's, that's really important for us to, 
to to keep in con keep in mind. So let's take a look at the the, the GSOC stuff. Um, and I should, probably should have gone over this at the very very beginning, but this is an introductory page in which you can talk where we talk about all the various sites and things to look at um, for us to for you to keep things in mind. So probably the very first area that you should go to is this. We have a a Slack channel in which people can join. The link to that is on the README file of the Talua repository. Not Talua API, not Talua admin, but on the Talua repository. You can click on that. It's regularly updated and you should be able to join us very, very quickly. Um, applying. So we want to make sure that you create a list of deliverables, etc. Talk about the approximate schedule, etc. Some of this stuff has been discussed previously. But what I also want to talk about is um, some some other things. Now, we, we have a mailing list that you can submit some of your proposals to. There's draft submissions at palisades.org that um, many of the mentors are a part of. But if not, try to get in contact with your mentor directly on Slack. That's probably the, the, the probably going to be the more effective way of getting feedback. Um, you can probably talk with your mentors on Slack about what you're trying to achieve and um, bef before you make the formal proposal to the GSOC website. Some other things that I would also suggest, if you don't have one already, I would really suggest that you add a picture to your GitHub profile. That really helps us to remember who people are and that um, makes the whole process a lot, a lot easier. So let's talk about the, the various repositories. I'm going to click on links here and I'm going to go to the Talo repository so that you can see some stuff. There are some files that I want everybody to be aware of. Under In every repository, we have a contributing guide. I suggest that everybody read that. Um, there's usually an installation guide well, not usually, there always is an installation guide. Please read that as well. We have a link to our pull request guidelines. Please read that as well. These documents are relatively lightweight. So many of the things that we talk about are things that you would normally expect, but um, we, we make sure that uh, everybody has the opportunity to read them and work. Generally speaking, we want issues that are created to have have you you assigned to them. We don't want people just working on issues if they haven't been assigned. The reason for that is so that we don't have duplicate efforts. When people are submitting pull requests, we want to make sure that they've been assigned the issue beforehand. Once again, to make sure that we don't have duplicated efforts. Uh, we also don't encourage having draft pull requests. And the reason for that is because typically at this time of year, we get dozens and dozens and dozens of pull requests and it really makes it difficult for us to, um, to, to manage things. And so therefore, please be aware of the needs of people. Uh, I want to click on uh, the issues pages. So typically we will have issues created and we've created a number of them beforehand. So there are, there are issues related to testing, and these are usually good first first issues. Um, and what I suggest that you do is just to click on some of these and just ask to be assigned um, these issues. And so there's a pinned issue on top of every repository, and I would suggest that you read this. And the first thing in this pinned issue is that we talk about the people who you should be trying to get in contact with to try and get yourselves uh, assigned issues. The reason for this is because um, we are trying to see how we can uh, reduce the workload of people who actually created the issues. Because, because we are a distributed and diverse team, we have some people who create issues and other people who are assigned to making sure that the issues are assigned and reviewed in the correct manner. So please focus on the, uh, on these people that are posted here. This list may change from time to time. Okay. Um, and just re read this here as well. 
um, some of the stuff that we have here is, is repetitive, but um, the, the things that we really want to make sure that everybody understands are that we are giving priorities to issues that are related to bugs, tests, or things that are related to um, CICD type activities. Um, almost all other issues like creating, like doing redesigns, um, restructurings and things like that. We are not really looking about that right now at this point in time. Things that are related to that need to be a part of GSOC issues. We are really looking at bugs in which things don't work the way they should. And then tests, which are fairly obvious, and CICD things um, are, are another thing. Um, I just want to go back and just take a look at our pull requests. And we may have a few. Okay, we do have a few here. So I'm going to click on this link. And so it's just going to scroll down. And you'll notice that when we do a pull request, you will see a, a code coverage report that is generated. Sometimes it's generated, sometimes it's not. And you'll see the percentage of our code that is covered and what percentage has been improved by the work that you've done. We generally want to see this figure, the delta, improving. We want to make sure that we're always getting better code coverage results. To give you an idea of um, our progress in this regard, um, I think over the last six months or so, we've increased our code coverage for Talawa Admin by about 30 percentage points by the API, by I think in all three repositories, we've increased it by 30 percentage points. And that has really made the experience better. Okay, so, I'm, and then what you'll also see in this report is the various um, files that have been impacted and their coverage um, based on the files that you've modified. So you'll get a very good idea of what it is. And I'll show you the code coverage things a little later, but let's just scroll down a little bit more. Uh, I'm going to bring up another. Let me just give me a moment here, because I think when I am in my in a different mode, I will see something. Just give me a second. Yes. So I'm going to just bring this over. All right. So this is the same issue. It's just a, a black background. Don't don't worry about it. But. When you submit your pull request, you will see things like no result conversations, and then you'll see the checks that have passed. And you can click on the checks, and you'll see whether they're red or green. Um, if you click on the individual checks, you will be able to see what has been happening. And um, you can expand these various things and see what has been, what's, what's been going on. All right, you typically if something, one of these links are red, if you click on them and click on the details and you go back to these, this sort of a screen, you'll see what the error is and you'll be able to troubleshoot it, do the commit that is required to fix things and then everything will be okay. All right, so that's, a, that's an important factor to take into consideration. Now, um, I want to go back to the Talawa homepage and on every single repository that we have, if you scroll down, we have a code coverage link. And I'm going to click on that right now. And this comes up in a separate tab. And here you'll be able to see the code coverage that we have in our repository. And just click on the various links and you'll be able to see that this directory has uh, code coverage of different um, um, degrees of success. And you can click on all of these and when it works, works very well. But if you want to get to the information that you really want very, very quickly, you can just click on the file list and you can sort. Um, this is just the file list for the models directory. And then you can sort by the coverage level. And then you can see, you can sort in different ways. You can sort here. You can see that this one only has 48%. And then if you click on the file list, for just Talo in general, 
file list here. This is for everything in all the subdirectories. And then you can see these are the ones that have zero coverage and all the other ones here. So um, let's give you an example of clicking through on one of these links. Um, so I click on this one and you will be able to see sections that are green that have been covered. And you should also see sections that are in red that need better checks and testing. All right, so this will help you provide a, just a general guide for what we what we really want. All right, so I'm going to go back to um, the applying links. Um, if you want to know more about the Palisades Foundation, just click on, uh, oops, just click on palisades.org, and we have uh, general information about how we started. We have links to various videos. We also have a YouTube channel. So if you click here, just do a search for click on the Palisades Foundation, click here, click on our videos, and you'll see um, videos that will be very interesting. So the ones that I suggest that you take a look at if you're working on Talawa API or Talawa Admin that I would suggest that you really look at this one. The Talawa functionality improvements talks about the things that Talawa Admin needs to do and by extension what the API needs to do to support it. We will soon be uploading one for Talawa itself and that will also provide additional information. All right. So I think I've covered everything. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and um, ask for your inputs. So do you have any questions, concerns uh, about the whole process? I'm willing to listen. Any questions? Yeah, actually, I wanted to ask, like, um, this type of meets are very informative and helpful. And um, um, like, after how how much time will be having another meet like this? That depends. Um, I think we may it may make sense for us to have um, another meet in a few more weeks so that we can discuss where Talawa has actually reached since today, where the API has reached since today, and admin has reached since today. And I think the best way to, to do that is just to focus on the Talawa itself and Talawa admin. The API will just naturally come out of come out of that. So I, th I, th I think we should work on having some more. You're, you're right. At this, we haven't done this before, specifically talking about the individual apps so that people have an understanding of where things need to be. But um, that is a, another one. Um, there is a video that I would like to also mention. So let me just share my screen one more time. Um, this one, the Talawa admin ideas one. We talk about the, so let me just bring that up so you can see it. The purpose of this meeting is for us. Okay, so you can see what's happening. So we, we, we talk about Talawa um, here, what's going on. Um, with the Talawa admin interface. And then we move over to uh, an existing church management system that, and then we talk about what it can do. And so it's a good comparative evaluation of Talawa and um, other uh, software that does similar things. And so therefore use this video to determine some of the features that you can consider when you're applying for GSOC. Okay, any other questions? So I, would, I would like to ask as a contributor's perspective, like if I don't have significant number of PR, but I have a great proposal, so will I be able to make it? Yeah, we have had people who have done a few PRs, not very many and they have been selected. Uh, typically, what will happen in those cases is that they've had a, a relatively good interaction with their mentors, and that has been helpful. But generally speaking, 
um, one or two PRs is not going to be enough. You, you're going to need to see a few. And, and we have so many issues related to testing. And many of the tests are relatively lightweight. They force you to get an understanding of how the application operates on, on the underside. And then that will also help you to recognize some of the shortcomings that need to be implemented or fixed. And then you can use those for your... Um, for your application, yeah, it's we we don't we, we don't have something that says all right, you need to have twenty five pull requests for you to be considered. We don't do it that way. We look to see whether the person has consistency in the pull requests. We make sure that the person has um, good good ideas that they go back and forth that they have discussions about things um, that there's some interaction. Um, with the mentors, the various mentors that they may have, um, and, and that sort of stuff. Generally speaking, I do not have a, a, a background in the core systems and technologies that are there for Talua. But what I do try to work as, I try to work more as a product manager role in which I'm trying to make people see the vision of where we want to go and try to make sure that we have the features that are, will be necessary to have this open source project be usable by people. And I think that we'll be able to make it basically usable by the time the GSOC application period ends. And then by the end of GSOC 2023, we'll have something that we may want to have um, some organizations test as a, in an alpha state. We're not quite there yet. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, sir, actually, I want to ask one. Yes, please go ahead. So, yeah, so as uh, the idea list has already released, and uh, fortunately, we are selected for the GSOC 2023. And uh, so uh, in the idea list, uh, we are having the different ideas and uh, also the assigned mentors to the uh, particular ideas. Yes. So, uh, what according to you uh, should be uh, our now the pathway because we are uh, with Taleva. I guess personally speaking, I am uh, around four to f five weeks uh, I am involved with Taleva. Yes. And now, now after the idea list is released and uh, the idea is being public and many of the contributors are looking forward here working with this. So, uh, what, what should be the thing that could make the impact uh, from now, uh, how should we move forward uh, towards looking uh, particularly for that idea? Should we directly connecting the mentors now uh, for the proceedings, or what? What should be the approach? Okay. I mean, if you now, are how, how we can proceed? Yes, if you are thinking of a particular idea, and there's some basic functionality that doesn't work right now, that would make your idea work or make the amount of work that you would have to do to make your idea work in the long run, well, then I would suggest that yeah. you try and fix those bugs and issues first as a part of the preparation for that so that you have less work to do during the GSOC period. Okay. That's going to be important. Okay. So it would be very important for you to create a, 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 an app that is basically functioning, which is what we've been trying to do um, with these videos that we've been posting on, on YouTube. Um, another thing that I would also, uh, so also talk to your mentors. Um, something that I would suggest that you do is take the time to look and see the types of things that just don't work that really bug you. Right. So you, you're you working on something and you, you may have this idea and then all of a sudden you discover something that says, that doesn't make sense. Why, why are we doing it mm -hmm. this way? Maybe we could do it mm -hmm. some other way, right? And then all of a sudden you have an idea that is not on the list. Okay. And so you can merge that. It may, it may not necessarily be, we were trying, we're really trying to see how people can do 350 hour projects. So you may be able to say, you know what, I think if I, if I do this little piece of one project, but add this other part 
in there. So I could do half of what is des desired from the, from the idea that is posted. I would like to then add this other stuff, right, which I think will make a difference, and then that could be your project idea. So don't think that the ideas that we have are, are um, immutable. They, they, they can be changed. We can move things around. Okay, so that should be something to consider. We, are, we want to have uh, an, an app that is functional. Um, if we don't have an app that is functional, the chances of us getting GSOC 2024 it gets reduced. And I really want mm -hmm. us to be a part of GSOC 2024. And I want people to start using this thing so that the moment people start using it, I think we'll have a much larger community. Because if people, if people in temples and churches and mosques and, and all these places all over the world start realizing that this could help their community, there's going to be a lot of people saying, hey, you're, 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 you're in software engineering, you're going to university. Why not add this feature to the software that we're using and get it to work the way we want it? So the more that we can get this thing to be usable, the better it will be. I would strongly suggest also that you take a look at the demo sites that are mentioned in the ideas list. And if you have any member, like a big, like an administration type member um, of a religious organization in your community, for example, or a sports organization or a club, get them to take a look at the demo and see what they say about it and say, you know what, this is good, but I want this other stuff. And it would be great if it could also do this, right? So therefore, you don't have to be asking or figuring out the ideas all by yourself and making assumptions as to mm -hmm. what the functionality should be. The demos are very um, accessible. Um, even if the person, yeah, so yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so so they will be seeing it uh, as a end user, and they will be experiencing yeah the app. Yeah. So yes. Uh, so they will be the feedbacks and all. So yes. that would also us in building ideas. Yes. Or upon the updates. Yes, and so um, if you feel that Talaba is not functioning sufficiently. Just go to the demo sites and just walk them through. Um, and so in, in some cases, they may not necessarily know English and some of the demo sites may only be in English. But you can explain to them what they're seeing and then click through and explain to them what they're seeing so that they have an understanding and they, they, their, their brains will start um, giving you ideas that you can write down. So... Don't just rely on your software engineering skills. Do some user user research as well. And I don't think it should be that hard to do. Okay? Even family members. Um, yeah. just, just, just go through and yeah, ask okay. them. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, so, while working, working upon the ideas, uh, making the mentors in loop, uh, it's advisable or not? Yes. Uh, means constantly updating our mentors regarding the progress we have made or things like that? I wouldn't say constantly um, because constantly has very many yep. connotations. What I would suggest is um, during this evaluation period or whatever the period is that you keep in contact with the mentors but have a regular um, scheduled time. So just just let them okay. know that maybe once a week I want to talk to you about half an hour. I'll, I'll contact you on Slack occasionally. But typically my experience has been if you can slot time with the mentors, it's usually better because they quite often don't have the time to respond to you all yeah. the time. Um, some of our mentors are based in India. Some of our mentors are based in Jamaica. And so there can be a 12-hour difference between you asking a question and you getting an answer. And mm -hmm. sometimes it's 20, sometimes it may be even 24 hours or more. So which is why it really helps you to have the time allocated to make sure that it's bet you, it is better suited for you and the person on the other end. Okay? Yeah, sure, sure. All right.
<laughs> Any other questions? All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the table to ask everybody to have a comment. So let's, let's talk from the beginning. Ashima, do you have any questions? No audio. You may be on mute. I put it in chat, if anything. Um, Anch, in the meantime, any questions from you? All right, Averil? Ayush? Oh, okay, yes, Avril. sir. Uh, hold, hold on, hold on. Avril. Am I audible? Yes, Avril. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, sir. I had been associated with Talava for more than a month, so I wanted to get an assessment of what I have done till now and what further improvements I can do so that I can provide better value to the organization's uh, perspective. Yeah. Um, giving individual feedback at this point, I don't think that's going to be such a good idea. What I would suggest is talk to the in the talk to the talk to the mentors and just listen to the general advice that I've spoken about. Focus on fixing some of the issues that we have in existence. Take a look at some of the issues issues that we have uh, that we are creating for bugs. If you see a bug of something that doesn't seem to be working correctly right now, we, we've seen a number of of cases of that in the Talawa um, demonstration that we had earlier. If you can start thinking about that. Those are the things that I would suggest, and then talk to your mentor specifically about the ideas that you would would have. Um, going through your individual PRs and, and issues right now, I, I don't think that's going to be so so useful because then we'd be going through um, the same amount of period time times twenty people that are on the call. Okay. All right. Um, Definitely, sir. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. So let's go back to Ashima. I think she raised her hand. No audio, unfortunately. Uh, Ashima, please go in. Please go in chat. Okay, Ansh, and I think we went through Ansh. Ayush was going to say something. Ayush. Uh, no, I do not have any question. Okay. Right. Okay, Kanishk. Kanishka. Uh, yeah, no, I don't really have any questions right now, but I really think it's a great community. Uh, I have interacted with a lot of people right now, like Norman, Siddesh, and uh, others. And uh, others in particular has uh, provided great feedback about uh, about what exactly are the improvements to be made, etc. Yeah, Adarsh is the guy who converted the Talawa API yeah, yeah. Yeah, to TypeScript last year. Mm -hmm. And... Um, he was very opinionated about doing the change, and uh, he mm -hmm. he changed it, and he continues to be um, a force to be reckoned with um, in the API. And I, I think he's a good addition to our team. And um, yeah, I'm, glad, yeah, I'm, glad, sure. I'm glad that we have that going on. Okay. So. Yeah. Also, other contributors right now, like Ansh and uh, Ishan. Yeah. And, uh, those guys. Yeah. Uh, like a lot of development process is very easy because of them. Yes, and I, I just want to thank you for the work that you did on the GraphQL um, schema stuff. That was really appreciated. So I think that will also yeah, help. Yeah, yeah that, no that problem. That will also help. Okay, thank so you. Manaram, anything on your side? Uh, no, sir. That was all. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Ravi, anything? Yeah, actually, um, I wanted to ask, what should I call each other, like the mentors and you? Just call Should it. I be using sir? Oh, just just by first name. That's fine. Okay, yeah, that's it, cool. Yeah, right. the, yeah, the formalities of like Peter Sir and all of that. It sometimes I look at it and I smile to myself, but uh, <laughs> yeah, Peter's fine. Okay. Okay. Cool, um, Shivam, anything on your side? Uh, yeah, um, uh, nothing special. But uh, uh, last month uh, in the day. Yeah, uh, from December, January, uh, I go, went through the documentation part and I understood, uh, I mean, I tried to understand the uh, schema uh, and the design of uh, application. So I will try to do uh, my contributions. Okay, good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. So Ashima has asked the question. Can we add new ideas to the to the ideas list? And absolutely. So I, I think earlier on I spoke about 
ways in which that could be done. Um, you, the, one of the things that I spoke about is the fact that some of the ideas that we have on the ideas list. So let me just go back to that and share the screen. Ideas list, here we go. So we have all these ideas on the right hand side of the screen here that you can see. Um, some of them, they are not, they're not fixed. Um, these are the things that we thought would be at a minimum necessary to make things better. Uh, we realized that there could be better, th better ways of handling some of these things. We realized there could be additional features that could be added. And as a result of that, uh, we welcome any new ideas that you may have. And as I mentioned before, we often find it's, it, it's usually going to be a good thing for you to think of brand new ideas or um, ways in which you could partially implement one idea and then say, um, I only want to implement like this part of the idea, but then I also want to add this other stuff to it that is not in anybody else's ideas, right? So that you can create something that is custom. Once again, like, like I mentioned, you will find yourself being able to think of brand new ideas by showing other people what a, what a temple or a church management system can do. Please look at those, the, the, um, the demo sites. So um, let, me, let me just go to a demo site right now so that you can see what I'm talking about. Um, just give me a moment. They're down in the Talawa admin area. All right, so let's just go here. This is a church management software system. And they just type me, you, at them, don't. Let me just create something. Okay, and so it. Okay, so you can log in. I'm just going to cut this out. You can click on people. And you can see the various, uh, I got it can see the various people. I just happen to know that Jason Byrne has a uh, family. So click on Jason Byrne and you can see uh, his information here. You can see the family members and you can see his address and personal information. You can edit each of these sections by clicking the edit section and then it comes up like that. You can click cancel and save. Um, you can click on events. There's a, there's a calendar view. Uh, to populate right and so they have these regular services you can click on click on this you can view the details for example etc so what i would suggest is that and you can, you can do a thing called a check-in and the, the, the idea behind a check-in is that say for example somebody is coming into the the prayer room whatever the room may be and and, and this thing is specifically for um religious, religious organizations but say for example they're coming into a prayer room um, you can welcome somebody, for example, and say, uh, welcome, Sudesh, to, to the prayers. Um, it's glad to see that you're here, and I'm just going to check you in using my tablet. Um, and you just click, you just click on, the, um, on the people. So, for example, you can click on check-in, for example, and you can see the various people that um, either are in the entire organization or who have actually um, said that they're going to attend and you just click on tick and then they're automatically attended. And so this can be done right there in the, in the application. Okay, so the, the advantage of this is that, um, the advantage of this is now that you can get reports. So the reports will provide you with things like um, the attendance and and um, charts of what people have been doing, etc. So this just gives you an idea, and I, would, I could just suggest to you just t take a look at um, this demo. Take a look at a lot of other demos that are out there. They're there. There are lots of YouTube videos. This is not the only one in which they show um, the various features that are available. Look at them and start thinking about stuff. Um, this is an area that many of you have never been exposed to before. 
It's sort of like a social media thing, but it's not quite. It's this and that. Um, please remember that we are doing a hybrid. We are doing something in which we are doing this administration part on the back end, but we also have a mobile app on the front end to create that extra glue, right? So that people will say, yeah, I really want to use Talawa because I can... I can get my news feed from my the members of my community. I can I can use my mobile app to make donations. I can get I can get um, I can get uh, alerts from the leaders of my community, etc. And then the leaders of the community on the back end can start seeing this administrative type of information that they can use to see things like why is it that the attendance for my addiction hotline group is going down is it that we, we have the wrong message has the type of addiction changed those sorts of things right so they can ask questions along those lines so please as much as possible take a look at these things and see how you can adapt the ideas to what you think would be usable um, based on experiences etc all right um, any other questions I should, uh, yeah, uh, I have a question. May I ask? Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Are you there? Please go ahead. Yeah, so Ashima is talking, so I just stop. I don't hear her. Um, does anybody hear yeah. her? Yeah, I can hear her. Yeah. Unfortunately, I can't hear her. I'm, I'm not hearing either. No, I, I, I am, can't hear. I'm also able to hear her. Okay, it, I'm wondering whether it is. It must be related was, to a carrier. She was just saying, saying thank you, by the way. <laughs> okay, yeah, I have a feeling it's related to you. Maybe it's a carrier. You're probably using the same carrier, um, ISP. Yeah, maybe. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so Ashley. I was asking that um, sometimes we have quite some large projects or hard projects for GSOC, right? Yes. So um, I wanted to ask for. Like um, re recently, we just started implementing custom lens for our Tala web. Do you remember? Yes. Yeah. So uh, these type of issues are quite um, quite long and time taking. Like we, I just issued and op uh, opened a PR on that custom lens repo, and we are waiting for that to be merged. So I wanted to ask, like, uh, if there is a GSOC idea which I'm interested in. <clears throat> Should I just start implementing it in bits and pieces in the uh, in new issues, and then maybe I will write a proposal for the rest of that to be fixed, or maybe uh, we should leave all of that project for the GSOC period itself and um, work on other other things, other small things. Um, that that really yeah you you could you could do the well yes we we do need the custom linting. Um, I think we're very close to having something that is basically usable at, the, at this moment. Um, you could consider um, that as, a, as an idea. Uh, yeah, no, no I, I'm not talking specifically about custom link. I was just oh, I giving a, ref a reference. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So uh, I mentioned this before that for your GSOC idea, it may suit you to start fixing things ahead of time. Uh, so that uh, your GSOC uh, period is easier. And yeah. so there may be, and, and in many cases, basic functionality doesn't work. So you might as well get the basic functionality working first so that you have something to compare it against and then expand upon that later on. Yeah, so as I understand you are saying that uh, like mm -hmm. if I have a, a very big, um, issue or idea for GSOC. So maybe uh, I should just start implementing the small parts of it in, in the issues and then I write a proposal for the large, the, the big thing. That's the exact thing. Yes, as, as long as it keeps the functionality of what we're trying to do, that, that, will, be, that will be useful. Um, yeah. It, it, um, yes, that, that works. Um, I have seen in the past where people have done very few pull requests and have spent a huge amount of time writing code in the background and they don't get selected and they, they try to get in contact with me very disappointed 
Um, we, we have, as we've become more and more prominent, we get m more and more people applying and people get disappointed. So um, the, the more information that we have as a part of the evaluation process, such as pull requests and an understanding of the vision that you have by talking with your mentors, that would be very useful in us coming to a final decision. Yeah, exactly. Um, for that reason, just I was saying that like if my idea is related to deep linking and the only PRs I have done are on the test or UI, that doesn't really show uh, if I really know about the deep linking thing. So maybe if I just implement some um, really small feature that yes. shows that I have idea about this and the proposal I'm writing, I have idea what I'm talking about. Yes, that, that works. That, that would be useful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I think I've gone through everybody. Thank you very much, everybody, for taking the time. And I wish you all good luck.